What's up guys? Time for our new video. Today we're going to have a look at the Rock End game which was played recently in a tournament all the way down to New Zealand. Just a couple of weeks ago I'm tracking my team as I'll be coaching the New Zealand team at the Olympiad and I pretty much want to see um, the games of every team member uh, what they are doing, how they are doing it, and the mistakes that they are making and the things that they need to improve. And um, that game that I want to show you, the same game that I want to show you is from the game between Russell Dive. He's playing uh, as black, he would be my top board and he's playing uh, my friend Bob Gibbons. Uh, Bob I have visited the last couple of times when I was in New Zealand and he was my he was my generous host. So Bob is obviously doing great against the Olympic player and uh, uh, many many time New Zealand champion. So he's up two pawns. A couple of rooks have been just traded on B1, and Bob. Uh, is defending the pawn on b6, which is the right thing to do. Of course, he needs that pawn if he wants to win the game. However, after the move king g5, he commits a very instructive mistake. A mistake which is not noticed by the computer. In fact, the computer suggests this move, which is the interesting thing. And he's uh, claiming, the machine is claiming that the move h4 should lead to a win. Why is this an instructive mistake? I'll show you in a second, but let's see first the course of the game. After king f5, Bob played rook to a7, so he will be happy to trade these two pawns and to get three versus one on the same flank, which should be an easy win. But uh, Russell is an experienced player, he played h5, and after b7 and rook b3, rook a5 check, they agreed to a draw. White didn't even try to play this for a win. Although I suspect that um, in this particular case he won't be able to win. The reason for that is that after say king f6 and or rook back to a7, first of all, the best setup for the white rook would be if he tries to put the rook on b8. But even if this happens with the pawn on h4, uh, his chances of winning the game will be limited. So let's go back with the with the rook on uh, in this position after king g5 where white played the move h4 instead of this i suggest the move rook a7 attacking that pawn at once and trying to get into this end game that we were discussing and then uh, that end game is quite an easy win it will be extremely easy for white to treat the last pawn of the opponent either for the h or for the f and two connected passers should be winning easily of course he shouldn't treat g for g but in this particular case i don't really see how uh, how can he do that even theoretically um, whereas the most stubborn defense h5 should be answered now with rook b7 from all the positions of the rook the optimal one the best one would be behind the pawn but apparently this is never going to happen with the black rook on b1 then the second best should be in front of the pawn actually the second best would be sideways of the pawn from this side however so that he can attack the pawns but this is also not going to happen the worst one is the one on a6 as the rook is sort of limited only with the defense of the pawn on b8 next it will go to b8 it will start threatening um, various checks and then the pawn would be promoted so this will force the black king to go to one of the secure squares on g7 or on h7 and uh, that's why the king moved to f6 on the previous move after b7 uh, this king needs to stay there as otherwise there is either a check or if the king is on f7 or somewhere here f7 e7 d7 the rook can go to h8 and uh, after the capture of the pawn on b7 there will be the double threat rook h7 check the secure and white is going to win the game so this is the reason why black is standing with the king on h7 in this situation and on g7 uh, the moves with the rook are also possible but they don't really have anything to do uh, with the current situation as white can simply send the king all the way to c2 if he wants to uh, so in that case uh, the rook can never, for example, go grab a pawn on the king side as the rook will move away the white one and the pawn will get promoted or he can even consider giving a check and promoting to a queen. So that means that this rook at the moment, the black one on b1 is stuck on the b file and this king is stuck on these two squares. Normally, this shouldn't be a problem for black if, for example, let's say that this position we're getting with 
the kink on h7 this rook this kink is on g1 for instance and now we have only these two this is everything that we have in this particular case uh, black should be saving himself as the only reasonable plan for white is to try and to bring the king all the way to c6 and once that the king comes on c6 to release the rook and then to promote the pawn but in that case black starts giving checks from far away somewhere on the first and on the second rank and spoils the fun spoils the coordination between the white pieces and after that returns to the b file so this is very easy draw now more complicated is the task if white has an extra pawn on the king's wing on the king's clock if he has an h2 pawn however this will change nothing as the maximum that he can achieve with that pawn is to push it all the way to h6 but from h6 it takes away one of the safe squares for the king one of the secure squares but the other one remains on h7 it is still safe so black is just moving his rook up and down up and down and there is nothing that white can do to win the game same is actually the result with the pawn on the g file in that case too the pawn goes all the way to g6 again the king has one secure square and this one cannot help the rook and the pawn so even if the king comes on c6 the same thing happens black is giving checks from far away and this coordination is broken so the rook cannot come out from b8 finally however if in the initial position uh, we put the pawn to f2 this is going to be a completely different situation. This is a very different cup of tea. White is going to start pushing that pawn and there'll be nothing that black can do to survive this. So imagine for a moment that this pawn is coming all the way to f5 or even to f6. The king can come on g7. This rook can come also to uh, b6. But whenever the pawn steps on f6 itself, neither the king can take it because of the check nor the rook can take it because the rook just moves away and the b pawn is getting promoted and finally king f7 leaves the king out of the secure zone and rook h8 is winning the game as the pawn will get promoted and for that reason at the beginning we didn't want to push that pawn whenever we push the pawn on h4 it's way more difficult for us to create the f pass pawn actually it would be impossible whereas now it is extremely easy we go f4 and we don't really care if he gives checks or not let's say he doesn't because this is going to be easier then we go h3 next move is going to be g4 then f5 nobody can stop us whereas if we compare this to what happened into the game uh, let's say that in this situation we also try to play for a win uh, with the same idea the problem in that case is, let's say after rook b2, is that after rook b8, king f6 and b7, king g7, we can no longer apply the same plan. Even though the computer says plus four and a half, plus five, don't worry about that one. I don't really see a plan for white to push his pawns. He can bring the king all the way to c6 again, this is true, but then the distant checks will happen. He can start pushing the pawns like that, but then black is simply going to trade, and whenever the pawn comes on h5, trade that one too. I really don't see progress for white. He may try to bring the king on e6, which is also an interesting plan, uh, and eventually then, or d6, king to e6 or king to d6, then move away the rook and try to trade it and get into one pawn in game. But again, the rook can give checks from far away on the first rank and remove the king from this excellent position or he may try to bring the king all the way to g5 and actually i'm not even sure what exactly he's trying to do there but this check is going to be unpleasant and also he has to watch out for this check from g4 which would be the final check and that will be a little bit of embarrassment for the white king anyway so that's why i believe that the move h4 was a very serious mistake which kind of killed the pawns immediately it lowers the quality of the pawns and the striker the candidate capablanca will have called the f pawn the candidate as there is nobody in front of it uh, has now difficulties in going forward so that's why you have to be very careful about your pawn structure and you should always pay attention to your candidate if you want to make a lot of progress and if you want to make the maximum out of your pawn structure so 
one last thing here that they want to mention. If uh, white wants to play for win after h4, uh, he should bring the rook on b7, I believe. This is a good thing. But then uh, he shouldn't go rook b8 and b7, as then the rook is getting stuck. So he may eventually try to play for win this one by sending the king all the way to c5. But that's another story. That will be a subject of another video. Now, thanks for watching this, and I will see you next time.